Welcome to Nancy's Neighborhood, folks, and it's good to be back with you today. I, I have no idea what I look like because as I ran into the studio today, it was sprinkling rain just a little bit. It sprinkled a little bit more than I thought it was going to. But we do have two guests for you today, and we're going to start out, and it's not like Robert and I sent each other memos, but we all have, we both have on red shirts. But this is Robert Brewer from Cleveland State, and he is, in, I've got this written down, he heads up the wildlife, forestry, and fishery programs at Cleveland State, and that is in the Greg Vital yes, in the, facility. Is that what it's what In it's the doing? Greg Vital Center for Natural Resources and Conservation. Okay. Oh, wow. Say that again. The Greg Vital? Greg Vital Center for Natural Resources and Conservation. Okay. That is super. And, and so tell me, wildlife, forestry, and fishery programs at Cleveland State, now what does that constitute? Well... We're a transfer program for, for people that wish to become wildlife officers, wildlife biologists, park rangers, park managers, things along those lines. Those, those fields require a four-year degree. They start their first two years with me and then transfer to a senior institution. How neat. I had no idea. So TWRA starts with you, TWRA, park rangers? It's Tennessee State Parks, U.S. Forest Service, uh, private consultants, anybody gonna, that wants to work as a, a biologist or forester. I had no idea. Now. Is that your background? That is my background. I'm a wildlife biologist. Okay, super. I had a gentleman on uh, not long ago from the uh, hatchery up in Teleco. Yes. And so that would kind of fall under what you Absolutely. do also. Okay, because fisheries, um, now, in your, I'm just going to, this is for my personal benefit, but I used to live in a house that had a pond, and occasionally a truck with little fish would come by, and we'd buy fish to put in the sure. pond. Is, do you all have anything like that at Cleveland State, or what are we talking about fisheries here? That is a private landowner, but let's say you wanted to manage that pond. What we would be teaching the students along the line and with their four-year degree is to come out and assess your pond and tell you what you needed to do with it. Oh. They wouldn't, we wouldn't be selling fish or anything like that. Okay, so. but I could have called on, well, you probably didn't have this program then, but I could have called on you, you all to come out and tell me why one day I went down and all my fish were so, Absolutely. Yeah, okay, on top of Absolutely. water. And, but I, that only happened one time, and then after that, I had more fish in there, and they were fine. So you all offer a two-year degree? Yes, ma'am. And what are those degrees? I mean, is it specific, or is it just, are they all globbed together as one, or what? Right now, we offer a, an Associate of Science in Forestry, Wildlife, and Fisheries. Okay. We're hoping to expand that and pull out a fisheries major, a wildlife major, and a forestry major in the future. Okay, so your fisheries major would probably be your TWRA person or your... All of them could be. Oh. It's just what do they want to specialize in. Okay, so then when they leave Cleveland State, where do they go? Typically Tennessee Tech or University of Tennessee Knoxville. Okay. Those are the two schools with uh, forestry, wildlife, and fisheries programs. Okay, so to, to get a four-year degree, I mean, to be one of these people, right. they need a four-year degree. Yes. Okay, wow, that's, that's interesting. Because I had a gentleman on, oh, several years, several months ago that had... Uh, he was a park ranger, and he'd written a couple of books mm -hmm. about, he was in Appalachia, and he had done some rescues and some this mm -hmm. and that. So, but he, I think, maybe he came back from a war and grandfathered in. Does that right. make sense? Uh, yes. No, it hasn't always been that way. Okay. But uh, it is now. Okay. Uh, so if you want to, now you can get other lower level jobs, technicians, jobs, things like that with a two-year degree. Oh, okay. But, but for the... The entry level and career level jobs, you have to have a four year degree in the state of Tennessee okay. for most of them. And that sounds good. That that yes. sounds really good. Now, one thing we wanted to talk about well, first of all, let's mention Mr. Greg Vital. Yes. Who has done, this is an awesome thing he has done for Cleveland State. Yes, he, Greg is a great supporter, and that's one reason we have the Vital Center now. Uh, he made a generous donation and help, is helping us get this program really going where it needs to go to reach out to the community, to help the community, and to give students an opportunity to start early in this field and get the experience they need to be head and shoulders above those students that started a four-year school. Yes, and this is so, I'm so glad you're on with me today because of the fact that I don't know how many people know that you all offer this. Not many, but we're growing. That's good. Yes. That's good. Roughly how many students do you have in this program, or did you have last year, because you're just getting ready to start? About 70. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. I, th I think right now I have actively registered about 50 students. Okay. So, and registration's not over at Cleveland State. Right. Okay, so they could still come in and, yes. and register. Now, y'all have an event, y'all. Did that sound Southern? That's all right. I you, do, too. <laughs> <laughs> you folks have an event coming up on August 31st. 
and it's a program featuring Mike Studer. Yes. And he is the state. The state apiarist and apiculturalist. In other words, what does that mean? He's in charge of all the bees in the state. So if you're a beekeeper, oh, he inspects okay. hives, he, he tries to control disease, he works the permits to move bees in and out of the state, things along those lines. And uh, he's the first of four events we're hosting, hosting for the Vital Center this year. Okay, you have to have a permit to bring bees in? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I haven't brought any yeah. in. So. Uh, and it's to control disease. Uh, and to keep from moving parasites, things along those lines. Oh, so he's, okay. he's going to be inspecting hives coming out to your place and helping you with any problems that you have. Now, bees are vital. Absolutely. And tell everybody why. Well, if we lose our bees, we're going to lose a lot of our food products mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have enough natural pollinators out there. Uh, and if we lose the bees, we're going to lose a lot of wildlife uh food as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where Mike's going to focus is the importance of bees, not only to agriculture, but the importance of bees to conservation. And we need them on the landscape. Absolutely. And people that go out and kill these bees, no, no, you don't need to do that. Now, there right. are different kinds of bees. Right. So the kind that are in the hives, that we eat the honey, and that are doing the pollinating, give them a little description of what's different in those that then... Well, those are actually honey bees. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of bees that are similar, but they don't hive like that. They don't produce the amount of honey that we can harvest. Um, but with all the pesticide usage and loss of, of pollinating plants, things along those lines, we've lost a lot of the other bees. And with a lot of diseases and insects coming in, we've really, the number of honeybees has declined. And we're, we depend on them. Right, and that's the ones that are important, that's the, the honeybees. Yes, and, well, they're all important, but we're right. gonna focus on and, that. And I didn't realize that until a friend of mine is a, a bee person, whatever mm -hmm. you just said that word was. Anyway, he, <laughs> he had hives and everything, and he said it's very important because we need these bees to help pollinate. Absolutely. And, you know, I studied science, elementary school, high school. I don't think I studied it in college, <laughs> but, but I, you know, I, I knew that bees pollinated, but I didn't know how important they were. Mm -hmm. Well, and, every flowering plant has a pollinator. Right. So. And, and all of our vegetables, we, we don't really consider them flowering plants, right. but they do have something on them that needs to be pollinated. Yes. For the corn and the beans and, the and corn, everything the beans, else. whatever crop it is. And that to me, I, you know, it's very, I didn't understand how important bees were. Right. Right. And they are vi vitally, and I'll keep using vital because that's Greg's <laughs> last name, but I'm not doing that on purpose. But, but okay, so he's going to be the first of the speakers you have yes. in. Then what else do we have to look forward to? Then coming up on November 20th, we're actually, we've invited several local high schools in for what's called a Natural Resources Skillathon. So we're going to put them through their paces, seeing what they know about natural resources and conservation. That and should be very interesting. Yes, it's going to be a good little competition between the high schools. Okay, how many high schools do you have coming I in? I think we have 10 right now. Okay. So, I'm not, But that's not completed yet. So. All right, so they're going to, this is going to be questions about conservation, natural resources, right. things like that. And it may be them having to perform a task. They may have to cruise timber. They may have to answer math problems. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's similar to what we compete in in college level, but we're wow. going to put them through their paces and see what they know. Okay, schools, y'all get to it right now, okay? Yeah. All right, so that's the second one that's coming up in November. Right. And then? It's February 6th, Rick Huffines from the Tennessee River Gorge Trust will oh. be coming in to talk about uh, conservation easements on your property, which a lot of people don't understand oh. and uh, don't understand how good it is both financially and ecologically to do. So he's going to come in and talk about that. Okay. And then finally on April 7th, we'll be hosting a conservation day and an Arbor Day celebration on campus. Okay, that'll be fun. Yeah. Are you going to sell plants that day and that kind of thing? We'll probably there? have a plant exchange going on. Okay. I'll have all the large conservation organizations there, whether it be the U.S. Forest Service, Tennessee Division of Forestry, Tennessee Wildlife Resources. They'll all be set up with uh, public booths and come in, tour that, learn a little bit about it, and then we'll culminate the day with a wild game dinner hosted by the Cleveland State Wildlife Society. Wild game dinner. Yes. Okay, now let's just specify what those. It's not roadkill. It's not like possum. Okay, but it might be. well, I mean, it might be possum, but it won't be roadkill. No. Okay, no. so kind of give them an idea of what we're talking about. Well, uh, in the past, we've had everything from whitetail deer to moose to pronghorn antelope to elk to muskrat to beaver to catfish. You name it. Wild game. Anybody gotten a turkey for this? Uh, there probably will be some turkey. Okay. There. Because I, my understanding from people I've known that are hunters, they are the hardest one to mm -hmm. get yeah. is the turkey. 
seems that they're smarter than some of our hunters. So they, they can be. They can, that's what I thought. Yeah. They can be. Okay, so now all of this is happening at Cleveland State. Yes. Which is wonderful, folks. And if you don't know where Cleveland State is, then you should. Um, because you all just celebrated your 50th anniversary. We did. And big celebration. I had mm -hmm. Dr. Colbert on the other day to talk about his book he had written, yes. 50 Years of Cleveland State. It's really good. Uh -huh. And I'll plug this. I have it at the Red Ribbon, 1395. And it's really, really a very, he did it by decades. Right. And it's really, but I don't think you were in there. Your department wasn't in there. Oh, you, but I mean, you came in later decades. Yes. You didn't come in at the start. So how long has Cleveland State had your program? I think we're going on six or seven years now. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's one of those that I built from scratch. Oh, fantastic. So, okay, so they just pointed at you and said... Well, I went to them one day and I said, you know, I've got students that are inter interested in this and we should build a program around it. They said, have at it. That is wonderful. So before that you were teaching what? I was teaching uh, environmental science, okay. general biology, survey biology, some ag programs, some animal science, plant science, things okay. like that. And so I've developed a lot of new courses for this one. I think this sounds so. wonderful because it's wildlife, forestry, and fisheries. Yes. And so this is a two-year program. Yes. They come out with a degree. They come out with an associate of science with transfer. Right. Transfers to Tennessee Tech or UTK. Right. And then two more years and they can be a forester or a, a wildlife biologist TWRA or, a wildlife or officer. what Jonathan does up in Teleco Absolutely. at the fishery. This is, I had no idea. Yep. And as a matter of fact, one of his interns this summer was a former Cleveland State student. Oh, really? Yeah, Ashley Hudson. She, she okay. went through our program. She was the intern at Teleco Hatchery this year. Well, I had Jonathan on, and whoever the guest was that was supposed to be on followed Jonathan. Uh, he was talking about the uh, youth fishing that mm -hmm. they did at Teleco, and whoever was supposed to come on after him didn't show up. So I, his son Bear came, and we talked about how Bear liked to go on those fishing things. Right. And, and so that was a lot of fun. I think Bear enjoyed it. But anyway, <laughs> it was, you know, he kept saying, when can I see myself on TV? And I told him, go to YouTube. But anyway, this is so exciting. So you still have time. You, they still have time to register they for your program? They do still have time to register. Okay, so as a freshman, they can register for one of your programs. Absolutely. Okay. Um, my philosophy is I want them into one of my program-specific classes every semester. And I want them in the field doing work every semester. Okay, so now Cleveland State's on semesters. The reason I say that, I used, yeah. I went when I went to college, it was on quarter system. So that means four times, unless they do, do you do summer? No, we'll have two regular semesters. Okay. Uh, uh, fall and spring, okay. and then we do summer. Okay. Uh, and what I, we also are, have a student chapter of the Wildlife Society, which oh, is good. a professional okay. organization. Okay. So I have uh, things for them to do year round. Great. Year round. Okay. And they, they're with professionals in the field doing okay. this Okay, so they're almost guaranteed that within two years they can get that degree. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. See, because, you know, I loved it when my son went off to college and they said four years, and I'm thinking, eh, let's see, yeah. five, six. No, but actually he did his yeah. at four. But, but you know, sometimes it has to stretch on over. Right. So, all right. So, Cleveland State's phone number is, I should have it memorized. Do you have it? 423-472-7141. 472 7141. 7141. And just call, that's the main phone. And, then and just call and they'll direct them to my you. My extension is 342. Okay. And so you want to call and ask for Robert's. And so uh, Robert's class, Robert, however, science they department. They say wildlife, it, they'll get me. Oh, that's it. Say <laughs> wildlife. That's that's the key word, folks, yeah. wildlife. And so the, I think this is exciting. If I was 40 years younger, I'd sign up right now to do some of this. I live on the water live on the river, and I, I watch things. I live there year-round. A lot of people don't like to live on the water year-round. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of exciting things that happen in the winter when it's Stump City out there. Mm -hmm. And and anyway, so I digress, Robert. That's but okay. anyway, thank you so much for being on because this has been so fascinating for me, and I hope they found it fascinating too, for it to come to Cleveland State, get a two-year degree, and if they don't want to go on and get a four-year degree, they can take their two-year degree and be an assistant to well, Somebody. there are some jobs out there for them, okay. there's not as many. Okay. And I will add that on our uh, our speakers, Mike Studer and Rick Huffines, mm -hmm. those are free, no pre-registration required. Just come see us. That's, that's okay. a service of the vital center. All right. So now will those be in the Johnson? They'll be in the Johnson Auditorium. Okay. In the auditorium and just show up. Now, what time? August the 31st, and what time will his program be? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Okay. Yes. So, so just show up at the Johnson Center on August the 21st at 3. 31st. 31st. Yes. 31st at 3 p.m. Yes. And I'm going to get you back on to talk about the other three programs you're going to do. Okay. As a year, um, I, I contacted Tracy. 
Right. And so I'll contact Tracy again and she'll get back with me on this. So, uh, But thank you, Robert, so much for being on with us today. I appreciate it. And I hope everybody found this as interesting as I did because I had no idea that Cleveland State was doing this. Well, we want to get the word out. That's I think exactly we have right. something good. We'll get the word out. If anything, if anybody gets the word out, it's going to be me. We're going to get this <laughs> word out. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. We have one more guest and she's going to talk about it a little bit different sport. Now we've talked about fishing and hunting and now we're going to talk about golf. So don't go away. We'll be right back. And as I always say, Watch our commercials, support our sponsors because they pay our bills, and we'll be right back.